I don't want to cry over spilt milk. I really don't. But I got irritated watching the USA men's basketball showcase against Team Canada last night because you saw LeBron James and Steph Curry out there together as teammates, which is incredible to see. Like those two were were born to play together. Um, they had, you know, a, a highlight in the game, uh, a legendary highlight. It'll probably go down being considering they're sharing the floor together. You'll see it right here. LeBron James to Steph Curry, the two best basketball players in my mind since Michael Jordan. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go on a whole tangent about LeBron and Jordan, but Le LeBron to me is the, the best basketball player I've ever watched. And, and Curry is in the top three along with MJ. But you get LeBron out in transition to Curry, Curry back to Braun and the dunk. And the reason I got irritated watching them post game was because if you were to ask me who are the three most famous basketball players in the world right now, I would say it is James, it is Curry, and it is Caitlin Clark. In fact, the way I put it with Caitlin is that if they were to make a Space Jam 3, she would make the most sense as the lead. Obviously, famously, Michael Jordan. I've compared her to Jordan because I don't think anyone's ever been the cultural phenomenon for a sport Michael Jordan was and is. Then there is James, obviously, in the, the most recent iteration of Space Jam. And to me, if they were to do another, not saying they should, but if they were, it would be CeCe in, in Space Jam going against the Monstars. And even during this broadcast, Gus Johnson was talking to Grant Hill, who's the managing director of the, the men's uh, team. And he said, you know, how, how come you can't put Caitlin on the team? And Grant was like, I'm not in charge of that. I got nothing to do with that. <laughs> he wiped his hands clean. No, he did. He did specify that. Um, he did specify that, uh, you know, the, the other women are a really good team and they are. Like, they're going to win the gold medal. Like, no one's disputing that. And no one's disputing the talent on that roster. And, you know, Gus also mentioned Angel Reese. And I think it would be cool if Angel Reese was on the squad with Caitlin Clark, too. I think when you're talking about the growth of the game, putting Reese on the squad would make sense, considering just how much talk there's been around Clark and around Reese. But when you're talking about Clark specifically, the argument at the time was that she wasn't one of the best players in the world. I mean, there were other things, there were other factors involved, but that was the, the main argument. And I would say right now that argument falls flat on its face, like poof, right flat on its face. Now, to be fair, she was struggling a bit when the rosters were selected, but it was clear the trajectory she was always going to be on. And you say, who would you take off in order to put her on? Which is the fair response. And I could argue Diana Taurasi, given where she is in her career. She's also been banged up lately. Uh, I could argue Chelsea Gray, given that the Aces point guard is, is just coming off of injury and hasn't completely found her stride yet. But I would also flip that question and say, which guard in the WNBA is currently playing better than Caitlin Clark? That's the way I would flip it. Because Caitlin Clark leads the entire league in points generated meaning points either off of her own scoring or off of her assists. If you look at just assists, if you want to just look at assist numbers, she is the best in the league right now when it comes to dishing out dimes. And wouldn't it be something to see her distributing to the rest of that Olympic team? The way we know Caitlin is able to get out and go and transition and set others up? That'd be something to watch. Now, I think it is best for her long-term to get this Olympic rest. I acknowledge that. I think, um, you know, she, it's only been three months since she was playing for the national championship game at Iowa. She's already played half of a WNBA season since. So I, I get the benefits that this break could provide for Caitlin Clark. But when you see the star power on that men's team, and you see that she's not going to be there for the women's team. It's like a, a glaring horn. And I just had to revisit it because I don't think any guard is playing better than Caitlin Clark right now. She's top 
20 in the league in points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. She just put up a stat line that no one in the history of the NBA or the WNBA has ever recorded before. You know, there's all sorts, I could pull all sorts of different stats and throw them your way. But I mean, I think when you're talking about who the 12 best players in the league are, in the world are, Caitlin Clark clearly and obviously belongs in that conversation now. In fact, I go so far to say, I mean, I, I, I don't care. I go so far to say the only player who I think has is above her for sure is Asia Wilson, who is the deserving front runner for MVP. And there are a bunch of other women having fantastic seasons. Copper, uh, Collier, um, Nafisa, that is, for the, the Lynx. You know, obviously there's Stewie and Sabrina in New York. You go on and on. There, there are women throughout the league who are excellent, awesome ball players. I'm a huge fan of Jackie Young uh, of the Aces as a two-way player. Uh, you know, shouts to anybody I, I forgot or neglected to mention. I'm not trying to, to diss anybody. All I'm trying to say is that Caitlin's different, and we've seen it. So it's it's not just a popularity contest. Obviously, that would be part of the, the benefit. You know, the, the star power that she brings. We've seen the ratings. We've seen the attendance. We've seen all the other things. But just on merit now, just on merit now, it's hard to look at the way Caitlin Clark is playing in the WNBA against the other best players in the world. Because I don't say this with any disrespect for any of the other players. They're all ballers. And I think so many people are now getting to see and appreciate just how many true hoopers there are in the W. But Caitlin belongs with anyone on any court, on any floor. And her game is naturally exciting in a showcase like that because she's going to get it, go, and push and set up Asia in transition. She's probably not dunking it, but you know what I mean. Set up Asia in transition. Kick it out. You know, her and Sabrina could work together as a, a backcourt at times. Stewie would be a perfect fit with CC. You know, the whole team, you get the point. You get the point. So it's over. It's done with. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend hours and hours or whatever too much energy on it. But I did see LeBron and Curry, and I thought to myself, come on. Really? Caitlin Clark's not going to be on the Olympic team? She's not going to be a part of Team USA? Because that's a gold medal level miss to me.